Sir, now you can start. We can start. Okay. How many people have joined in? How many have joined in? 45, sir. Okay. So, um, you know, I, what I'm going to ask is for the first uh, four or five minutes, um, you know, I'll request you to volunteer to sort of summarize what we did yesterday. So who will volunteer? Please start. Please start volunteering to sort of uh, summarize what we did yesterday. Please go ahead. I'm waiting. Please unmute yourself and can some of you start summarizing what we did yesterday. Hello, I can't hear anybody. See, I can't hear anybody, I can't see anybody. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, hello, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, okay, so you started with uh, started by talking about the different technological innovations. Yes. We defined innovation. You gave a right. brief timeline. Correct. After that, I think uh, we went to what are knowledge societies and correct knowledge creation correct after that we talked about uh, how ideas become inventions what are inventions we briefly discussed that yes and uh, if i remember correctly we finally were uh, defining what are different uh, ip right tools such as patent copyright etc correct now can somebody improve on what uh... You know, Shreyas has just talked about. Can somebody just slightly add further to what he talked about? What he said is correct. And I only want you to improve on what he said. So that was a good beginning. So would you like, would somebody just come in and uh, elaborate a bit more on what he said? You know, it's always good to summarize what we did the previous day, okay? So just somebody else would like to volunteer. Please go ahead because I can't see you and without seeing you, you know, doing this lecturing is a blind lecturing, but it is this type of voice uh, thing and your sharing, which will help So kindly volunteer yourselves, unmute, and then please tell me somebody other than Shreya, please. Go ahead, please unmute yourself. I'm not hearing anybody. Hello. I mean, is only one person attending or who else is attending? Is nobody attending? Hello. Hello. Is there a problem somewhere? Hello. Hello. Yeah, please come in. Navita, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, we were discussing some IPR tools uh, last time. Like uh, yes. if we are uh, if we are uh, giving yes. some new kind of functionality, there uh, we have to do patent. We have to Correct. go for patent. patent. And if we are, uh, if we are uh, like uh, improving some aesthetic part, uh, uh, not functionality, but the aesthetic part. Uh, yes. We go for design registration. Perfect. And uh, then, if we are uh, uh, writing some piece of uh, software involving some algorithm, that is yes. uh, uh, that uh, for that we go for copyright. Yes. And uh, then, uh, uh, like um, uh, these logos and all. Uh, yes. We they go under trademark. Very good. Now, but we also said, if you remember, that if we write our software, and if that particular software is embedded in some device, or it is embedded in some system, 
or it shows a major technical effect then and which is impacting functionality then we may uh, also file can... a patent isn't it yes yes, yes then yes, we yes, may sir. also file a patent on that so yes, that sir. is what we discussed broadly and then we said also if you remember we also said that you know the human mind creates in different ways correct and we looked at creations and different types of creations we looked at creations which impact functionality we looked at uh, creations which uh, impact aesthetics we looked at creative expressions like this particular slide for example and then we looked at you know creative words logos combination of words logos etc etc those are also other forms of creations so we talked about the creations and will somebody elaborate when does a creation become an innovation when does a creation become an innovation anybody other than namita to really elaborate please i'm waiting i'm waiting to hear please unmute yourself and please re respond please respond and it has some utility uh, utility, yes, but we said one more point. If you remember, um, uh, uh, we talked about one more aspect when the creation becomes an innovation. Anybody else? Just try. See, this is the type of functionality. We were talking, talked about functionality. No, that is true. Functionality. But when does the creation become an innovation? When do we use the word innovation? Anybody? Do you remember that what we said? When does the creation become an innovation? We said something about society, isn't it? What was it? So when it is uh, adding some new knowledge to the society. Not just new, adding new knowledge. It is being used in the society. Yeah, you so, so when when we have our creation and the creation finds use in the society, when it starts getting used into society, when it diffuses into society, that is when our creation becomes an innovation. Correct? So now we have separated the words creation, innovation, and then we use the word invention. And, and in under what circumstances did we use the word invention? Go ahead. For what circumstances did we use the word invention? Please go ahead. You know, these are very fundamental. Now, once we understand and take a grip on these fundamentals, we'll be in a position to go very fast. So I want that's the reason I'm waiting and asking you what is an invention? Anybody, please? Please go ahead. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Anybody? You know, 45. Everyone seems to be silent. Please, please, uh, you know, unmute yourselves and talk about it. Hello. It's something yeah, yeah, please go ahead. It has some novelty. Uh, no, invention. When I said use the word invention, we said something. When does when no we use the word creation, we use the word innovation. That we have understood that when the creation finds use in society, it becomes innovation. What is an invention? We, so any we associated. Uh, go ahead. Any scientific input that we provide to the society for facilitating the livelihood of the society that will be an innovation but when does when do we use the word invention invention See, related to the only scientific uh, functionality innovations. functionality when you address issues of functionality and if nobody has done it before then you would call it an invention so functionality is a very important part. 
and that is what you said right in the beginning that you the different ipr tools and we said that when you have inventions inventions are protected by this uh, legal tool called patent right? so that's the summary of so what i would request all of you you know you, you're probably not used to this style of lecturing okay i would in every class new when we start like when we do day after tomorrow i would again urge the entire class to quickly summarize what we have done in the previous class okay like the previous two classes so when we do the lecture day after tomorrow i would request you to um, to, to to summarize what we did on 13 and what we did on 15 okay so that will be the style so that you, you quickly recall and we pick up from there and we use that as a launch pad okay to launch the next lecture so that's precisely are you seeing the screen now are you seeing the screen yes sir okay good please respond because see you must understand and appreciate since i'm not seeing any one of you it becomes very difficult for me to lecture you know to a bank wall right so i would like you to respond because then i understand that you're listening you're following me so here is the screen where we looked at the word patent we have looked at the word copyright we have looked at the word uh, design and registration we have looked at the word trademark we have looked at the word service mark now these are some of the standard ones now in india now I'm talking in India, okay? If you are developing new plant varieties, okay, by any means, you develop new plant varieties, then in India, you do, even though it's a functional issue, right? Suppose you develop a plant variety which can grow in Rajasthan with very less amount of water. That's a functional attribute. In principle, you should get a patent, correct? But what happens in India that we don't give patents for plant varieties. We have a separate act, separate law, okay? And that's called, you know, protection of you know, new plant varieties and farmers' rights act. That is, the new plant varieties are protected by a separate law, not under patents, even though the plant varieties have functional attributes and there is one more and that's called geographical indications and that means there are certain products which gain reputation because of the place in which they are made so for example if you if you use the word you know say pochampalli and you say pochampalli sari that itself means that this particular sari is woven in a particular typical way in Pochampalli. Okay, so that's why it's called Pochampalli sari. So if you don't weave that sari in Pochampalli, you can't call it Pochampalli sari. Similarly, Banarasi sari. Suppose you weave that sari in Mumbai, you can't call it Banarasi sari. It has to be woven in Banaras. Similarly, there are certain type of products. Where the name of the place is not in the product, where the product has become famous. Anybody knows of such a product? It has become famous because it comes from a certain area, and yet the name of that area is not there in that product. Anybody? Anybody remembers any any product you buy in the market? I'm sure among the 45 people attending the lecture, somebody will know something. Can you unmute yourself and talk, please? Bye. Please go ahead. I'm waiting for your response. Rice and mango. So, yeah, go ahead. Which one? Rice and mango. So, rice, yes, but which mango? Uh, it's uh, the seri. Okay. The seri, you're good. One. And Any other? Bas basmati rice. Correct. 
Basmati rice, for example, is a type of rice, but the name of the, the geography of that place, where it is grown, is not known. But Basmati rice comes only from certain areas in India. Right? And Basmati rice. So those words like Basmati rice, you know, Muga silk. Where does Muga come from? Anybody? Is there anybody from uh -huh. Assam in the 45 people? Nobody from Assam? Hello? Hello? Nobody from Assam? Is there anybody from Assam? Any, anybody from Bikaner? Hello? Anybody from Goa? I'm finding it very strange because I can't talk to blank people. If there's nobody responding, it is very difficult to talk. Hello, somebody has to respond. Yes. I am Assam. Yeah, but what is that famous thing in Goa where the product is well known, but the word Goa is not in that? Anybody? Any? Sorry? Any? Absolutely Any, correct. Absolutely. 100% correct. So, Fenny, for example, is well known. The moment you say Fenny, immediately your mind goes and says, ah, it must be from Goa. So these words, these names, Feni, then, you know, for example, we say Hapus or Alfonso, correct? We say Bikaneri Bhujia. All these names are very famous. And all these get their reputation over time because people use them and people associate that coming from certain regions. That's why these names are protected under another law. Not in trademark, but is protected under what is known as geographical indications. So, so this slide has told you about new plant varieties and farmers' rights act, design registration, copyright, patents, service marks, trademarks, geographical indications. And you know, I'm sure all of you know that in the case of when we develop technology. There's also some element of those technologies, some elements of those technologies, which are not disclosed, you know, and what is that called? Anybody? The element, the, those parts of the technology, which we don't disclose, what is that called? What is that called? What is that called? Classified. Classified, yes, but there is another term for it. You're correct. It is classified. You're absolutely correct. But what is the other term? Anybody? You know, when we have, when we do some work and we don't want with certain parts of that information we keep away, what do we call that? Do you have you heard the term called know-how? Have you people yes, heard the term called know-how? Yes, sir. Yeah, so know-how and that know-how which is there is sometimes not disclosed to others, and that is called a trade secret. It's it's something that we like to keep as a secret. For example, the formula of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has kept it as a trade secret. It has not told anybody. Okay. So, for example, you know, many a times, you know, in case of software, what do you keep as a say, top, you know, uh, as a trade secret in your software? What code is it called? Source code. Source code, correct. Many a times, you don't disclose the source code. That is your trade secret. Okay, 
So that is very important. So that becomes a trade secret. Your source code, when you don't disclose, becomes a trade secret. So in this slide, now we have seen various tools of IPR. We have looked at patent. We have looked at copyright. We have looked at design registration. We have looked at trademark and trade and service marks. We have looked at production of new plant varieties. We have looked at geographical indications and we have looked at trade secrets so far. Clear? So all these, these different tools of intellectual property rights protect different aspects of your creations. Um, so patents protect inventions, design registration protects the aesthetics and non-functional features, copyright protects the creative expressions, trademark and service mark protect those words, uh, logos, or combinations of words, logos, which associate a product or service with who is offering that product or service. Then we have looked at protection of plant varieties, which are for when you create new plant varieties, you can protect it under that law. We have looked at geographical indications, to protect the names of products, which have gained reputation over time because those products come from certain specified regions, right? And trade secrets are those where we don't disclose to others, but we keep that part of the law to ourselves. So that's broadly what we are looking at, right? And I'm going to, you know, when we when we meet on 17, um, we will, um, you know, I will ask again some of you to summarize what we have done this. So I've now done a very quick summary of what we did last time, and we added a bit to that particular bit on this, right? So uh, taking going further onto it, now I'll change the slide. One minute. Yeah, so what happens? What happens is, what happens is the following, that when you are looking at the knowledge domain, has the slide changed? Has the slide changed? Okay. So, so if you look at the total knowledge domain, some part of the knowledge domain is what is called a completely open source knowledge domain, where you can use that part of the knowledge domain without any constraints okay you can use it freely without any constraints so that is called the open source part if there is a part where i'm marked in red is called you know where it is an owned part where people say that this is my property this is my my knowledge right and that part is protected by tools of intellectual property rights or ipr and that is the owned knowledge domain where people can use it because it's known to people, it is seen by all. It has got controlled use because that part belongs to some people. Okay. So there's an owned knowledge domain and there's an open source domain. And that is where we are now operating. So when you are publishing your papers, okay. When you're publishing your papers, mind you, that knowledge which you put in a publication, okay, that knowledge which you put in a publication, you get the credit for that knowledge, but you don't own that knowledge. But only when you take that created knowledge of yours, you protected it by certain tools of the intellectual property rights, then you own the knowledge as well. So when you publish papers, you don't own the knowledge. You are given credit for that particular knowledge only. But anybody can use that knowledge from your publication. Is this clear to you or is there any doubt? But please free to ask. Please feel free to ask. I have yes, to sir. talk to yes. Professor Naik because this way I can't lecture. If nobody reacts, then I can't lecture to people who don't react. 
क्लियर हेलो गो हेड क्लियर जी इफ देयर आर 45 50 पीपल इट कांट बी अ कंप्लीटली साइलेंट यू नो आई आई हैव नेवर लेक्चर टू एनी क्लास व्हिच हैज एवर बीन सो साइलेंट I mean, is it very typical to age me? No, I, I, I doubt. But so the previous batches have been more reactive. Or are people just simply logging in and not attending? Complete silence. Is something wrong? Rosen Nag, are you there by chance? Then I'll send him a message. Think that I am unable to take this because I don't see any reaction of anybody. Yes. Is there is there a problem somewhere? A technical problem? No, no, no. no sir. Is there a technical fine, problem? Sir. No. Then why are people not reacting? It's on. Is there a technical problem? <laughs> can you please put on the mic and if somebody can respond, please? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Uh, but i am asking for a response any questions no sir no so please tell me if there are no questions please tell me there are no questions no questions because only then i'll be able to take the class if you don't react how do i know that you know whom am i talking to fine so so when you take the knowledge domain this knowledge domain gets split into two parts as i said one part is the open source knowledge domain the other part is the owned knowledge domain the open source knowledge domain is the one where your publications when you write books you you know publish you give lectures you attend workshops all that knowledge goes into the open source however if you protect that knowledge which you create through the tools of intellectual property rights as we said before then those that part of the knowledge goes into the protected zone and in that protected zone you can use the knowledge but so public can use the knowledge but must take permission to use that knowledge so in all this game what happens is that if you want to own if you want to own it's not that you have to own but if you think you want to own that knowledge because you think there is a certain commercial value or there is a certain strategic value then you may as well protect it using the tools of intellectual property rights and then you tell people because then you remain protected clear now so that is where the system of the knowledge uh, uh, you know the, 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 the domain which is there excuse me sir yeah please go ahead sir is are there only two uh, parameters like commercial and strategic for uh, making a knowledge um, uh, for taking the uh, patent well it is essentially either commercial or it will be strategic that you would like to protect it can you think of anything else why you would like to protect that no sir because uh, uh, it becomes innovation when it goes to the Society. So it is when it is used by the society. So, for example, yeah. good, very good question. I am happy that you have asked it. For example, if you take this mobile phone, correct? Now, this mobile phone, the functionality of the mobile phone, this mobile phone, okay, the functionality of this mobile phone, which is here, is protected. by hundreds and hundreds of patents right and yet we are using it so the invention has come to the society we are using it but as a user okay now if somebody else wants to make a iphone of this type with that functionality 
can this simply go reverse engineer and use it the answer is no why because those patents which are there protects that part of the knowledge and if you want to use that part of the knowledge to make another iphone and if there is a patent from the you know apple company and you have to go and take permission from them you cannot simply use that otherwise but as the user i am using the iphone that's not an issue that is how the iphone has become an innovation okay but when you are saying using the knowledge that means using the knowledge to make another iphone or make give certain functional features to the iphone then of course we will go into that have i answered your question namita uh, yes sir good please ask like this time to time sir okay yeah go ahead please ask please how go ahead years, how many years this patent will be there is there good. any year, year limitation yes. yes very good question there is a limitation that patent is valid for 20 years from the date of filing your patent now that is 20 provided you get the patent so you make a patent application and if you get the patent then your patent your right is valid for 20 years from the date on which you filed it there is another provided provided you keep on paying a renewal fee every year for those 20 years have i answered thank your you question sir. yes sir thank you sir good so so we will talk about all of them in more detail as we go along but please ask questions as they come to your mind otherwise you know your doubts will remain and you will not be clarifying it as we go along so please feel free to ask questions okay don't worry about other uh, you know other things now so if you now look at this whole issue yeah go ahead you are asking something yeah ask us yeah please go ahead please go ahead please go ahead sir when you do some incremental creation or invention yeah. how to patent it sir very good so incremental so when you say it is incremental that means there is an existing knowledge what you have done you have assessed that existing knowledge having assessed that existing knowledge you will find out what is the delta knowledge which you have created which is adding value technical value to the previous knowledge and then you will have to show that how this particular knowledge you know is what is that delta part and we will come to that part how you will assess that whether what i have done is patentable or not patentable that will be the next part which i will do and i will go into great detail of how we will assess our inventions whether they are patentable or not patentable just hold on for some time i will come to that part okay so but please do like this ask and when i come to the next part of course i will uh, answer your question in more detail now so it is very important now what is important that see as you look at what is happening today if when i was doing research and and i was doing research for example so oh no when i did my phd i did my phd many 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 years how many years ago if i tell you i got my phd in 1976 when none of you were probably born okay now when i did my research i did my phd and i did my postdoc and i did all the further research etc those days okay going back to the 80s you know the speed at which new things were coming up right would take some time today that speed has gone up enormously right by the time you have the iphone 13 the iphone 14 comes in and then some you know, um, you know other android thing comes in and some other thing comes in so the technology is moving very fast so because technology is moving fast what is happening the innovation life cycles are collapsing if the innovation life cycles collapse then products we get into a quick obsolescence so products and services become 
they go very quickly obsolescent. And therefore, you need to very speedily both do your research and speedily manage your research. And that is where you need to look at all the properties of intellectual property rights. Sir, which I have a question. Please go ahead. Sir, when the technology is getting updated by a, a days or month, a year, then why we are going for a 20 years of patenting, sir? Good question. Very good question. In fact, you're right. Because if it is going that fast, then why do you want to do it? No, it's very important. And why it is a very good question? For example, suppose you're working in the field of that is creating new drugs, new vaccines, new drugs. Now, what happens in those cases that in the laboratory, as you're working and creating those new molecules or new formulations, then the first thing you do is that you're creating those new molecules. Then out of maybe 10,000 molecules, you will then do selection, reject out, and maybe there'll be 10 molecules which you will take to the next stage. And then from there, maybe two molecules will go to the next stage. So the clinical trials, everything you'll have to do. And now when you go and file the patent and you get it for 20 years, see, during the life of that patent filing and everything, the regulatory features and almost seven to 10 years goes away in getting those regulatory things. So for those type of fields, you keep it for 20 years. The other ones, which goes very fast, like your IT, and other things that go very, very fast. But people file the patents, people get the patents, but they don't renew it every year. So they renew it strategically for the period for which, it, you know, for them it is strategically useful. After that, they don't renew it. They let it go into the public domain. So they keep it valid and live only up to the period they want it. So you're absolutely correct that for technology by technology, it will change. Have I answered your question to start yeah, with? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Good, good. So you have to ask, hey, these are very live questions which hit us all the time. And we are doing some a subject which is very live. And you will see as I go along how it becomes extremely important for us. So, you know, when we are doing knowledge transfer, we are doing, you know, collaborations. Suppose I have to collaborate with you. Then the question that comes in, you own some knowledge, I own some knowledge. We put the two knowledge together, create another set of knowledge. Question comes in, who will own that knowledge? Will it be owned by you and me? Or will it be owned only by me? The whole bunch of questions that come in that particular way, right? So today, for example, very important, that if you look at only recently, a lot of technologies which have been developed in India, for example, right? Now, if you look at energy systems, nobody comes and gives you those technologies, right? Nobody is going to give it to you. Even if you pay money, they may not give it. So you need to develop it. Then the question comes in, in developing all those things, what is the process by which you will go so that, A, you are able to generate the technology, you are able to protect it, you are able to collaborate, you are able to give the technology, all this becomes a very complex part of management of knowledge. Now, let's go to the next step out there. That is, so when you come to intellectual property rights, there are four important parameters that become very important for us. These are those four parameters. Parameter number one is knowledge ownership. We talked about it because intellectual property rights gives you the ownership to the knowledge you are creating only publication does not give you a mere publication does not give you ownership of knowledge it gives you ownership of the paper ownership of the publication but does not give you ownership of the knowledge number one moment you convert Hello, yeah sir. go ahead sir, uh, before patterning uh, i should not publish paper or uh, can i publish paper sir i will tell you that you will first file a patent application then publish your paper. If you first publish your paper, then you will not be able to patent. So the moral of the story is, if you think, if you think that says something worthwhile to protect, it is worthwhile to take rights on, then you first file the patent, then you can go and publish it. Okay? 
Okay, thank you. Yeah. So first is the knowledge ownership. Second, because you have taken ownership of the knowledge, you get some rights for it. Okay, that's why it's called intellectualist creation of the human mind. Intellectual property, you convert it into property, and therefore you get some rights for it. So intellectual property rights comes from there. So it's a creation of the mind converted into property that gives you some rights. That's why it's called intellectual property rights. Now in all this, in all the laws, every law, there'll always be some exception and there will be some obligation because movement, the right is given to you. Rights always come with obligations, okay? And these also the laws come with certain exceptions. So for example, if you take that there are certain types of exceptions which are there where anybody can use that patented invention or the copyrighted material or any of those without the permission of the owner. There are exceptions to that. So we have to know which are those exceptions. For example, suppose you have got, suppose somebody has got a patent for an invention. Because patents protect inventions, right? And you want to use it in your research. Correct? I read this particular patent document. I think it's useful for my research. I want to use it for my research. Right? The exception in the Indian law says you can use it for research purposes if it is only for research purposes. But if what I get out of my research, if I want to commercialize that, then I can't. In that case, I have to take permission from the patent holder. If I just want to put it in my thesis and don't want to commercialize, if I just want to publish a paper and I don't want to commercialize, then I can go ahead and use it. That is called a research exemption. But if the fruits of my research is going to get commercialized, if I'm going to convert that into technology and it will be used somewhere, then I don't fall in the exception. So you have to be very careful and carefully balance what, how you, you know, what you can use, what you cannot use in your research, you know, how much you should use and when you should use, when you should take the permission, when you should not, when you, when you need not take the permission. So these are all issues that we need to understand and we will address them in this course so that you become more knowledgeable research workers you know out there and that you don't get into trouble as you do your research part and when you don't get into trouble the organization also doesn't get into trouble that is the relevance that's why this is a part of the research method course then comes in obligation so because the you are given certain rights we'll come to what the rights are later just because you're given some rights, the law also comes and says, you have some obligations to meet. And in those obligations to meet, one of those obligations is that you must make the products of your um, patent and other things available to public, uh, you know, at reasonable cost. So there are other factors which come in that really you need to understand how to govern these particular rights. So that is a very very significant part so therefore if you remember that intellectual property rights are nothing else but number one that the creations of the human mind you convert them into your property those property gives you certain rights and those rights have, have four important aspects one is knowledge ownership one is gives you rights one is that there are exceptions to these rights and there are obligations to meet. So these four are the ones which govern. And who gives you the intellectual property rights? It is the, when I say intellectual property granted by the state. State means not state of Maharashtra, state of Gujarat. State means the country, the sovereign. It is given by a country. Therefore, it's extremely important to realize that there is nothing called an international intellectual property rights or there's nothing called it you know if you're talking about inventions there's nothing called an international patent you if you want your 
So when I take a patent in India, my rights are valid only in the only in the, um, uh, the political boundaries of India. It's not valid in Nepal. It's not valid in Bhutan. It's not valid in Bangladesh. It's not valid in Pakistan. It's not valid in any part of the world. So which means that if I want to protect my invention in other countries, I have to apply for that patent in other countries and get my patent in those other countries as well if I want to exercise my rights there. Any questions at this stage, please feel free to ask. Yes, sir. So you told that please. it's like a limited, limited at some certain country. So I ought to do the patenting for each country separately. In that case, if somebody uses this, my knowledge or my things in some other countries, then they make the product and sell it to other countries. How would this uh, product sir? Oh, so which means, and, and it's a good, again, it's a great question because this is the fundamental part. If, if let us say, let's take a, uh, let's just take a by example. Let's assume that I have done an invention in India. I filed a patent in India. I have also filed a patent in Bangladesh. I've also filed a patent in Sri Lanka, argument purpose. They are filed in these three countries. Now somebody in Bhutan sees that I have not filed it in Bhutan. Right? The person makes it in Bhutan, sells it in Bhutan, sells it in China, sells it elsewhere. After making it in Bhutan, I cannot do anything to that person. Why? Because I did not protect it in those countries where I thought no. So therefore, it becomes extremely important that when you patent something, take a call and all you must patent it. Clear? Okay, sir. Thank sir. You. Uh, so Apple has taken a uh, patent in all the countries. Well, it depends on where you, actually, you remember I told you strategic. Yes. Sir. So, so th that's why I use the word strategic. So, so the question that comes in that what is my business strategy? That if I think that my thing will not be used in certain countries or if the market is not very big or if in those countries they cannot manufacture it then i don't take it in those countries because each one country where i take it becomes expensive i have to spend a lot of money have i answered yes yes sir. yeah so so that is see therefore you're what you're now understanding that you know when we talk about intellectual property rights right simply uh talking about intellectual property rights is not good enough you have to understand the entire intellectual property rights in the context in which we are doing things context is very important right so you have to understand that when we are talking about intellectual property rights which is given it is territorial in nature and therefore this territoriality is something that we need to understand therefore we need to understand which are the countries in which it can be used, which are the countries it can get manufactured, which are the countries which have large markets. So it's a patenting is not like publishing paper. Patenting is strategic. Publishing paper may be otherwise. But if I want to patent, then it has got to be strategic. Right? It's not simply filing a patent for the sake of getting a patent. Is that clear to all of you? Yes, sir, sir uh, can you elaborate more on obligation part? Yeah, I, I will come to the obligation later, if you don't mind. I will touch on, but, but broadly, the obligation means, see, where I told you there are exceptions. Now, exceptions is where the users get certain concessions. Obligations are where, where you have to meet certain requirements set by the government because you have been given this particular right. And what is this? So first part is what is this right? And I'll come to that right in the next couple of um, couple of minutes. And then I will tell you something about obligations as well. Any further questions at this stage? So kindly elaborate this that it is territorial in nature. So yeah, good. When I say it is territorial in nature, these intellectual property rights 
are given to you by the government in that country. So, for example, if that right is given to you by the government of India, that right is valid only in the jurisdiction of the government of India. It is not valid outside the jurisdiction of India. So, for example, you and I can travel to Nepal. <clears throat> Nepal is another country, right? May I interrupt? You and I can travel to Nepal without a visa. May I interrupt? You? Please. If I own some knowledge in India, it means that if I have if I have not patented in US, it means yeah. that in US uh, they will they don't own that knowledge. No, you are not. You don't own the right to that knowledge in US. Okay. You don't so, own the right to that knowledge in the US. It will say you you are associated with that knowledge, but you don't own the right to that knowledge in the US if you have not filed a patent and caught a patent. Okay, sir. Clear? clear? Yes, sir. That is the meaning of territorial. Okay. So so that is important. And now let us come to so, so that's important. So let's take therefore. Has the slide changed? So therefore, very important that if you are the inventor, I've shown the inventor here. So the inventor is always, you know, meeting this particular challenge that I have made a creation. So what do you will do? First, you will take your creation. You will dissect the creation and find out, you know, which part is related to functionality, which part is related to aesthetics, which part is a creative expression which part is probably something else and then you decide which tool of intellectual property right you will use to protect which aspect of that particular invention clear so so for example let me take uh, uh, let's take uh, can you see this uh, pencil yes can you sir. see the pencil yes sir yeah, so you look at the pencil point. Now, suppose you have made an improvement on the pencil point, and when you use the sharpener, let's say the point does not break. You know, many of the pencils, when you just keep sharpening, the point keep breaking, right? Suppose you have done an improvement on the strength of this particular material, number one. And number two, also, let us know how you can shear this material without making it brittle. Because if you make it brittle, then it will break. So you do something on this, where now you make this particular material which is less brittle. And yet it has the strength. And yet it has the softness to get cheered. And it has the softness to leave the mark on your paper. Let's assume that you have done that invention. Right? So that you will file a patent and you protect that functionality. <laughs> then when you're sharpening, if the material, the, this is all wood, suppose you have developed a material where you can make a pencil and this can easily be shared without no, no, this becoming rough. Because when you're using with your finger, you don't want this head to be rough. So it can become smooth. And if you can do that, right, that's another functional part. So two functional parts we have pulled out of this. So for which you can file patents. Now, if you look at the name of this particular pencil, okay, you may not be able to see it. The pay, name of this particular pencil is Apsara. So Apsara as a name, they have filed as a trademark. Okay, that's filed as a trademark. So Apsara as a name identifies who is making this pencil. So that is fine as a trademark. Then if you look at this pencil, it's almost like a hexagon. Correct? Yeah. Now this together with this black, then together with this silver, all these, these are aesthetic features of the pencil. This can be protected by a by what? Anybody? These aesthetic features. Okay. This hexagonal part together with the multicolored thing this will be protected by design registration. Correct. It will be protected by design registration. 
very good and then the way they have written you know some things i don't know whether you're able to see it but the way they have written it you know on this right so this you know can be protected that that is like a creative expression so we have arranged the words etc on this pencil that can be protected by a copyright so in this pencil this creator of the pencil says oh this aspect i will protect by patent this aspect i will protect by copyright this i will protect it by trademark this i will protect by design registration and there are certain law which he has which he will not disclose to anybody that he will protect it as a trade secret you clear the from one sorry one product we have dissected the different types of creations in this product to identify which are those tools of intellectual property rights i will use to protect which aspect that is where i will protect this by 360 degree using different parts of intellectual property is this clear to you yes sir sir is, is there is any way to yeah sorry tell again please i did not get your question is there any way to for for the yeah because what so is, is protected within the boundary correct there is nothing which gives you which is infinite or you know international but, but we will come to later on that various countries have come together right and yeah. they have agreed on certain things but if it is if this is true for your country it will be true for my country if it is good for this it will be okay for me but only then it will come in not otherwise such answer is no okay. clear clear so so this is where we stand so you know th that's why i told you this subject is a very logical subject and you have to understand this from the totality of the subject you have to take a 360 degree view of this particular subject but then you will begin to appreciate various aspects of this and never mix up the word patent copyright trade secret trademark these and these each one is distinct patent will protect inventions and it will protect the functional aspects design registration will protect the aesthetic aspects and the non functional part of that trademark as i told you will protect those logos names etc which associate the product with who makes it then we talked about copyright is where there are certain creative expressions which are there and that for example you know all of you about soaps right i'm sure all of you about soaps yes so next time you go now when you go home and you look at a soap packet especially if you look at a soap packet from hindustan lever or hindustan new lever take a lux or rexona or life boy or dove you will find that it will tell you in that pack that the way that pack is designed right the way that pack is designed it will tell you that this is a copyright you know of hindustan lever so that if anybody else copies that particular way of packing it then they will get you know hindustan lever will come against them and they hey that was my copyright how could you take it clear sir creative expression part is not very clear it can be in trademark as well no as well correct now we will when we your your absolutely correct the creative expression part can be in copyright the creative expression part can be in trademark now i will when we come to the two it mark right and it can also be in the design the now for example this pencil this the color combination everything could have been a design as well and it could have been a copyright as well so we will see under what circumstances of that creative expression when do you protect it 
as a copyright? When do you protect it as a design? And when do you protect it as a trademark? Very good question. And we will expand, we will, we will um, address each and every one of these. And you're absolutely correct that the word creative expression is too general. So which aspect of the creative expression can be protected by copyright? Which aspect of that can be put as a trademark? And which aspect of that can be put as a design registration? Agree with you. We will elaborate on this. Any any other questions for today? Please feel free. See, the whole lecture becomes interesting when you start asking questions because here is a subject which you have to think in real time. Yeah. So so, so we will. If uh, are there any other questions for today? Please feel free to ask. Oh uh, yes, so one question. Please go ahead. Uh, so, is the state obligated to um, approve all the patents, or can it reserve its decision on some? Well, it it is like this, and that is what I will do next time. And that is, not all the types of inventions can be patented. Therefore, you have to now go into the nitty gritties of the patent act. We will not go into the law as such. But I will then exactly address this question in the next lecture, where we will now start looking at patent in great detail. We will look at inventions in great detail. We will try to answer the question to what type of inventions uh, can be patented. And the question which was asked right in the beginning, that incremental, if it is there, how do we assess what is that incremental part? And under what circumstances, what benchmarks can be used to see whether what I did is patentable or not patentable? Clear? Yes. Thank you. This course is a very analytical course. And the reason we are doing this as a part of the research methodology is that as you are doing your research, if you don't think about this in real time, it may be too late after you have completed your research. So you have to think about intellectual property rights as you do your research, as a part of your research methodology, so that you can do good research and wherever it's worth protecting, you will know, okay, maybe I should protect it at this. I use the word maybe. It's not that for everything we will go and protect, right? But we make an assessment whether we will protect, whether we will not protect. If we think we need to protect, what should be protected? How will we protect? Will be the questions that we shall ask. Clear? Sir, I have one question. Please ask. Sir, if uh, any technology I have invented in India and I yeah. have patented it, yeah. and that comes in public domain. But tell that again, please. Uh, if I, I have invented any, anything in India yeah. and I have patented it, okay. then that, that will come in public domain. Na? It will come After that, uh, See, it will come in public domain. But, but, even public though it is uh, in the public that domain, government technology. Sorry? That uh, technology. Yeah. Then uh, that person outside India can see that or not? Yes, that anybody can see it anywhere. Then uh, in the time of uh, applying that uh, technology, uh, this uh, patent outside India, it, mm -hmm. In that time frame, that can uh, store our technology and uh, and make invention of with that, na? That is that why. Happen. That is why we have to take a strategic decision. That when I file a patent here, whether my whatever I am developing, whether that will be of relevance in which countries, what will be commercial and strategic implications in those countries. And then we will take a call whether we'll file it only here or we'll file it elsewhere as well. Sir, what is the user time frame in, in which we can get patent? Well, what that all these I will start next time in the next lecture. I will go into some details of this where I will answer these questions. And 
at that stage, please refer to your question once again, and we will address them in detail. Is that all right? Is that all right? So we will work it out that way. Clear? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. In chat box, there is the one question. Yeah, please read it out. Whether there can be publication on such research which take basics on patent work. You can see in chat box, sir. In chat box. In chat box. One minute. How do I go to the chat box? Expand this. You can stop sharing, sir. I can stop sharing? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. One minute. I stop sharing. Okay, yeah. So now I go to the chat box, right? Yes, sir. Uh, one uh, year. Chat box. Show the chat. Whether there can be a, can be publication of such research, which take basic, yes, it can. Yes, you can. In fact, I will take examples of this as we go along. The answer is you can. So what we will do in the next class, uh, we will take the point as to, we will start with the whole idea of what is a patent and how do we go into details of patents? How do we look at inventions? How do, do we do an analysis of what are inventions? How do we look into them? What is patentable? What is not patentable? And if it is patentable, what do we do? And what are the implications? That is going to be the next class. The next so class. Sir, would you, would the next please, class is on. Sorry. Would you please give some reference, sir, for reading? Yes, I will give you. See, number one, I will share with you some very simple booklets, which I will give okay, now to the. Uh, they will put it up for you, and I will also share all these slides with you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. We'll sir. certainly do that, and we'll okay, help you with you. that. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.